Hi, I'm Marcus Bianchi with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Today we're going to talk about residential and commercial buildings energy and uses um, to give you a context about uh, how energy is used in the residential and commercial buildings. Just to give you a presentation outline, um, we'll talk a little bit about what sustainable buildings are, some of the scales in buildings, um, then I will talk about the recommendations that the IEA has for um, Southeast Asia, and then talk about end uses for both residential and commercial buildings, which is the main topic that we'd like to talk about today. First, let's talk about sustainable buildings. Um, many definitions exist. Uh, I particularly like the one that says that they need to have durability, comfort, health, safe, and energy efficiency all together. To actually deliver those things, um, this field that we know as building science controls the flows of water, air, vapor, and heat uh, through the envelope of buildings to make sure that uh, uh, we deliver the attributes of uh, sustainable buildings. Of course, for the most part, we are talking about energy efficiency here. Um, so we will focus our talk on the energy efficiency side. The point of bringing this up is energy efficiency is not the only attribute that we need to focus on when we're dealing with uh, uh, buildings. Um, there are many scales and levels in buildings, and I think we need to, uh, to give you a perspective that from the material side, um, they're very small scale. We go into the component side, so components of the building envelope itself, and then uh, the building as a whole. So we put all the components together in the building. And then we're talking about the built environment that actually it encompasses not only one building, but several buildings are operating together. From the scale of utility uh, programs and utility demand, we need to look at the built envi environment as a whole so we need to consider multiple buildings interacting with the grid. Just to give you a perspective of the word energy balance as exists from 2017, um, if we look at the, the entire primary energy supply going through all the transformation to the final energy demand, there are many losses that take place, of course, as some of them are, uh, are told that we need to pay no matter what. Um, from like the, the, the thermodynamics uh, laws. But um, what we are trying to, to convey is that from the o o original primary energy supply, um, there are like several demands being uh, fulfilled here and buildings is, uh, is, is part of those and the other here um, category, but industry, transport, others, and, uh, and then a bunch of known energy uses. And this is just to give a perspective of uh, where the energy comes from and where does it go to. And, and we are focusing on the final energy demand when we are talking about uh, the building energy use. Um, the IEA in 2014 uh, put together a, a set of recommendations for Southeast Asia and uh, for buildings specifically. Actually, the recommendations involve more than buildings, but I actually selected the ones for buildings here. Um, and and they're, they're somewhat uh, simple, uh, and, and some of them are, are recommendations that we follow in the United States um, as a comp contrast. Um, so, for example, um, the very first one is uh, to create building energy codes um, and minimum energy performance uh, requirements. Then uh, the second is really to try to aim to net zero energy consumption in buildings. Um, the net zero uh, energy, energy buildings exist in the U.S. Those are buildings that we actually produce at least the same amount of energy that is consumed um, over the year. Um, and then... Uh, the very last one is to improve the energy efficiency of each of one of the components being like building envelopes, uh, mechanical systems, and other building components, trying to bring them up like to a higher level of efficiency. Um, we'll jump into residential buildings now to uh, consider 
you know, what happens in homes. I, I would try to start by giving a perspective in the U.S. and, and then um, because residential buildings are so different in many countries um, as opposed to commercial buildings, I think it would be important to, to give a contrast between those two. Um, first of all, in, in, in generally in the U.S., the main energy um, end uses in residential buildings are in space heating is very important. Uh, refrigeration, obviously, you have uh, generally a, a, a fridge with a freezer uh, many times. Air conditioning is uh, very much used in the U.S. Obviously, you have lighting and water, water heating. And in miscellaneous, you're usually talking about all, everything that is consumed for, from an electricity standpoint, um, going uh, into uh, computers, um, portable heaters, vacuum cleaners, um, printers, whatever is necessary to actually be uh, connected. Those are the main energy um, end uses here. Now, from a U.S. context, it, it, in, in, in the end use of energy depends very much of the type of building um, for homes that, that exists. Um, if you look at all homes, which is the very top line in this graph from the uh, U.S. Uh, Energy Information Administration, um, as you can see, uh, a very large part of this uh, energy used in the U.S. is for space heating. That may not apply uh, fully to uh, Southeast Asia, I recognize, but it's important to, if, if, if this is excluded, um, you can see like the relative consumption of energy in, in other systems that include air conditioning, include water heating, uh, lighting, refrigeration, and all the other uh, here. As, and, and I just wanted to point out that if you exclude um, space heating, uh, all other is actually the highest uh, uh, consumption there is. It's higher than water heating, for example. Um, and it's higher than space uh, cooling in, in, in altogether, which, which actually brings, uh, brings up an important point, which is um, there may be like a necessary focus on all the appliances and uh, electrical uses that are considered in, uh, in homes anywhere, really. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that we, we cover uh, buildings that are uh, multiple um, apartments, for example, or multi-family multi units. The reason being, in multi-family units are more common in many countries, and uh, the obviously the consumption changes significantly if you have that, because um, now you share walls, and because of that, heat losses and heat gains through walls or windows tend to be smaller than it is in the single-family um, detached um, home. So. I think it's important to, to just contrast that a little bit and the end use depends uh, on the type of building generally um, that, that is being considered. Um, over the years, um, and, and this graph is again from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, you can see from 1980 to 2015 in a per home um, energy consumption has been declining. And it has been declining because of the, uh, well, there are multiple factors, but certainly building buildings, uh, homes, and uh, multifamily has, uh, has benefited, or the energy use has benefited from like stringent um, building codes that actually try to keep decreasing the energy consumption in buildings. And uh, as it can be seen, in U.S. average, the reduction is pretty significant. It goes from like close to 120 to less than 80 uh, BTUs per home, or medium BTUs uh, um, per home, which is a uh, which is a significant reduction. And that is true all over the U.S. In some places more, in some places less. Um, generally, the the largest gains are in colder regions because of, it, of an increase of uh, insulation levels, let's say in walls, for example. Um, in Southeast Asia, and I, I tried to get some information to uh, to include, 
Um, I, I should start by saying that I'm no expert in Southeast Asia generally, but I think it's important to say that there has been some good um, research that uh, has pointed out to uh, um, what, uh, what happens in Southeast Asia. In this particular case, you can see that um, different places in Southeast Asia um, have a consumption that obviously excludes, is, is excludes water heating and space heating significantly. Um, you can see some of it in some areas, but generally there's not a lot of space heating just because the climate conditions are, are very favorable to avoid space heating. But what I think it's important in this graph, and this is from uh, Murakoshi and, and, and other researchers from 2017, as you can see, there is a significant consumption that actually surpasses the consumption in homes in places like Japan, Korea, uh, UK, Germany, France, um, and, and about the same as in Canada in some areas. And so I, I think it's important to take that into account that um, there's, a, there's a potential for reducing energy consumption in those places. The U.S. continues to actually have a larger energy consumption um, per house um, in here, even if you exclude heating and water heating. Um, cooking is a, a very significant end use in, uh, in the Southeast Asia in homes, and I think it's something that we need to be aware of, and there might be opportunities in cooking that uh, could, could be improved somehow. Um, same same um, um, story about Southeast Asia in this case is uh, the prediction for evolution of energy uses. And I think we, uh, the people uh, watching this are, are fully aware that there is an expectation of an increase in cooling over time um, and, uh, and the use of appliances over time, in which case, you know, the electricity demand is expected to grow quite a bit. Um, over 30 years, the energy required for space cooling has increased uh, seven and a half times, which is uh, pretty significant. And uh, air conditioning ownership is still very low, so there is a, a very strong potential that it will increase. And, um, and, and what is being expected is an increase in 30% of its peak by uh, 2040, which is um, all of those are, are, are concerns, I think, um, on the uh, electricity uh, demand in Southeast Asia. Um, changing to commercial buildings, I think commercial buildings have uh, um, significant um, more similarities because commercial buildings in most places have similar end uses. Um, I, I don't want to make an assumption that I know that for a fact, but I think it's more of a possibility for us to uh, to consider commercial buildings more likely than residential buildings. So um, in the US, um, and, and again, this is all to give a United States context and, and it helps to, uh, to think it through. If you actually go by all the numbers, offices uh, consume the most of the energy used in the US. This is because of the number of buildings there. We'll actually look at that in, in a per square foot um, or per square meter um, numbers so we can compare those better. But offices have a very significant in, 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 uh, portion of the buildings here. Um, I'm, I'm recording this in August of 2020, which uh, obviously the, we are in the middle of uh, um, dealing with COVID-19 in the US and elsewhere. And so offices right now are probably consuming much less with a significant shift for, for this work on, in offices to going to homes. So this is not accurate, accurate like today specifically, but, um, and, and that may be true for a bunch of those uh, different buildings that are considered here. But um, uh, this is the, the picture in, in numbers, right? Uh, to give you a perspective, it's a little bit different. If you look per, per unit area, um, food service now becomes uh, pretty significant, and not only significant it was before, but actually increased from 2003 to 2012. 
Um, don't know specifically the reasons for that increase, but I think what, what this shows is that there's a potential benefit in trying to focus in, uh, in, in the very high end uses, um, such as healthcare and food services. Um, as you can see, they are much higher in a per unit area than offices, for example. There was the, the, the very large, uh, uh, big number in the previous slide. Um, most of the energy uh, used in buildings are um, it, in those uh, different um, end uses, right? So lighting, refrigeration, ventilation. Obviously, when you talk about refrigeration in commercial buildings, we're talking about supermarkets um, that have freezers, they have uh, uh, refrigerators and so on. Um, obviously, we have ventilation in commercial buildings because we need to have uh, a certain air exchange uh, constantly. Space cooling becomes kind of a requirement because you, you need to have, particularly in hot climates, um, um, space cooling for people to actually come and, and visit. Office equipment and computers. Um, in food services, there is cooking. There's some space heating, of course, in the U.S., um, I suspect in Southeast Asia that would be much less um, and, and so on. The lighting becomes a, a very large one. Um, as you can see in the U.S., uh, space heating still is very dominant. But uh, if you exclude space heating, you see lighting, refrigeration, ventilation, and cooling all in a very similar uh, numbers um, of, of use while you know computers and office equipment is is not as much even though it's still a significant energy use there um and and then if you actually look at all the major end uses in a different way um different cut um, you'll see the lighting dominates uh, along with all others and all others here are like all the equipment that uh, that may be used in different different modes and different types of buildings, um, such as motors, pumps, uh, compressors, process equipment, backup generators, and so on. But the lighting, refrigeration, ventilation, and cooling are all very high um, culprits of uh, and uh, use. Um, this was an overview of uh, end uses uh, for buildings. Um, I mentioned the fact that residential end use is dominated by appliances and cooling. I think uh, that would be the case in Southeast Asia. I, I'm excluding here the space heating. Uh, commercial end use uh, include, includes lighting, uh, cooling, and refrigeration. Um, and I, I should just kind of like remind you that building function really matters so, and here obviously I'm talking about commercial buildings. In commercial buildings, food service and healthcare uh, facilities lead the uh, and, uh, end uses in, in commercial buildings in the U.S. And uh, we, we expect that that would also be the case in, in other countries. Well, thank you very much. Uh, if you need uh, to contact and uh, ask questions, you can uh, uh, contact uh, Sika and uh, Isabel, their emails are here. Thank you so much.